in this video we will discuss force on a dislocation due to a stress field this is usually known as the peach kohler force the idea here as we have seen is that plastic deformation is due to the dislocation motion this is the dislocation mechanics or dislocation mechanism of plastic deformation that external permanent shape change which we call plastic deformation is due to motion of dislocations on its slip plane in the slip direction now if we look at this so the plastic deformation the cause of plastic deformation is some sort of external stresses on the crystal which is usually represented by the stress tensor because of this stress and because dislocations are moving one can think of that the stresses are leading to some sort of force on dislocation per unit length fl which moves the dislocation to develop this idea we want to represent this force to make the physical meaning of this force clear what we want that when the force moves the dislocation it will do some work so we call that work w dislocation so this will be this force multiplied by the displacement of the dislocation correspondingly the external stresses while deforming the body are doing work on the crystal and we define this force fl this force fl should be such that the work calculated by the displacement of dislocation w dislocation should be same as the work done by external forces on the crystal so this is the basic requirement in defining or rather we can say this is the defining relation for fl so let us look at a simpler case first in this case we have a block of crystal here is the block of crystal shown and the mid plane is taken as a slip plane in the red by symbol i have shown a positive edge dislocation so this is a positive edge dislocation positive is dislocation shown by its standard symbol upside down p so this is the dislocation line and you know that this dislocation line will be an edge of an extra half plane so in this crystal the extra half plane will be like this this plane will not continue down whereas the nearby planes in the crystal the nearby planes in the crystal will continue down now when we say dislocation is moving so this extra half plane will move under the application of shear stress toe so the each shear stress toe has been applied on the crystal on the top and bottom faces and under this stress this half plane will move towards right and when it comes out of the crystal from the right face of the crystal there will be an overall deformation the top half of the crystal will slide with respect to the bottom half by one burgess vector b b is the burgess vector associated with the dislocation line so let us apply that principle of uh, equating the work done on the crystal to work done on the dislocation to get this force by unit length on the dislocation line so let us say we have seen that the crystal moves crystal moves by the burgess vector b so if we think if we think the lower half of the crystal fixed so the force on the bottom does not do any work because there is no displacement the top force on the crystal due to this toe will do work 
how much is the force on the top face of the crystal? So this force, this F external, is tau times the area of the area of the top face. In our definition, we let us take this length L, which also happens to be the length of the dislocation line, and let us say this width W. So this external, since the shear stress tau is force per unit area acting on this face with length L and width W, we have F external is equal to tau L W. And this F external is shifting the top half of the crystal by B. So the point of application of this force moves by B. So W external, uh, let me write it W crystal, due to external forces, is F external times the displacement, which is B. And F external is tau. L W. Now let us look at how much the dislocation moves. So this red dislocation will have to sweep the entire slip plane. That is, it has to move through this width W of the crystal to achieve this slip. So the dislocation, although the crystal is shifting only by a Burgess vector B, the dislocation moves this entire width W. So if I think of a force FL, so if I think that this dislocation is subjected to force FL, FL, this force per unit length Of the dislocation line. So if FL is the force per unit length of the dislocation line, then work done by this force, work done in displacing the dislocation by this FL force will be FL is the force per unit length. I multiply it with the length of the dislocation line, which is L. So this is the total force. And the displacement is W. So FLW. So then I equate these two because I define, so this is really the definition of FL. FL should be so defined that the work done on the dislocation should become equal to the work done by the external force on the crystal. So we have W dislocation should equal to W crystal external leading to W from here is equal to sorry. I just got it the other way around, does not matter. FL LW I'm missing something here. Yeah, this was the force and we need a B here. So to LW B. So this gives us then LW cancel. So the force per unit length in this special case is to B. So we will use this special case to test our general formula which we are now going to develop.